Uh, very good morning. Uh, today we would be doing a continuation with uh, the previous lecture that we did on soft computing, where we were able to cover the genetic algorithms and uh, new networks have already been covered. So in line with that uh, continuation of that chapter, uh, we would be now covering fuzzy logic under the soft computing lecture. Now, uh, fuzzy logic uh, is something uh, which uh, talks about the way humans are able to make decisions regarding the fuzzy linguistic variables. For example, uh, you may come across like we are very good at dealing with uh, fuzzy variables. Like for example, if I have to say that it may rain today, for example, if I say that X is taller than Y, if I say that X is smarter than Y, now these all statements comes under the category of fuzzy. Uh, reason being that uh, when we say that X is smarter than Y, so we doesn't know what is the exact value of uh, X, uh, the two values on the basis of which we are saying that whether a person is smart or not. But still, uh, human mind has been trained in a way that we are able to gauge uh, who is smarter, who is not smarter, or what is larger, what is uh, uh, smaller, right? So these statements, uh, if in case we wish uh, that uh, computers should also process. So in a general form, uh, these statements cannot be processed by a system. I cannot ask uh, uh, a system to process a statement like, uh, tell me X is smarter than Y, because it would require a specific value of that smartness. It needs a specific uh, uh, range of values under which we would say that when it would be, uh, it would be uh, viable to say that X is smarter than Y because it needs a value. So uh, fuzzy logic actually uh, therefore resembles the human uh, like decision making methodology. And uh, the basic imp uh, the part of this entire uh, conversation right now is that when we talk about uh, uh, dealing with these uh, statements, these statements are uh, somewhere vague in uh, uh, representation. They are imprecise. Uh, representation because uh, if I say that X is smarter than Y because this definition is vague because uh, if there are two persons then one person may have its own definition of smartness other person may or uh, then uh, define his own uh, way of uh, representing this smartness. So in a way we can say that this information of these kind of statements are vague, imprecise or incomplete. So uh, the fuzzy, the term fuzzy refers to uh, things that are not clear enough, which are impartial true, which are not 100% uh, true. We doesn't know about the truthness of the statements, which may or may not be true, right? And uh, if you look around the real world, then there are thousands of uh, examples in the real world, which uh, involves this kind of fuzzy uh, behavior or fuzziness into it. So, uh, so the entire concept of fuzzy system is to create uh, systems, to create a computer system which can deal these kind of fuzzy nature or fuzzy behavior of uh, the fuzziness into the problems, the way human beings are doing so. So the fuzzy logic uh, is uh, in a real world many times we like uh, we see that in counter situation when we can't determine whether the state is true or not, uh, false. So fuzzy logic will provide a, a very valuable flexibility for reasoning. So there is a reasoning associated with fuzzy systems. Thus, in a similar manner, the way our human mind is able to reason about the fuzziness, right? Uh, fuzzy logic as a branch of science was introduced in 1965 by Lofty Zedek and his research paper, Fuzzy Sets. And uh, in fact, he is considered to be the, the father of uh, fuzzy logic. Now this uh, fuzzy logic, when we talk about fuzzy logic, uh, uh, it uh, actually means that, uh, uh, it see if, uh, uh, if you talk about uh, um, uh, real time systems or uh, normal systems, there can be two things which are associated. Like for example, in Boolean algebra, we have only two things, whether something can be true or something can be false. For truthness, we can may relate one, the value of 1.0, right? or one. And similarly for falseness, I can relate a value of zero. So there can be only two things. If I say a statement, it can either be true or it can be false. But in fuzzy theory, uh, this is not the case. In fuzzy theory, 
uh, you can have uh, many ranges of values. You can associate a degree of truthness or a degree of falseness with each and every value within your set, right? So, for example, if I say that uh, in this case, uh, uh, X is beautiful, then Y, right? So, a person A might say that uh, X is beautiful, then Y, and uh, he has associated a value of, suppose, uh, 0.9. See, the fuzzy values are always uh, put into the category of uh, the range of 0 to 1, right? And these can be real values. So if a person says that X is smarter than Y and has a value of, suppose, 0 0.9. So in this case, 0 0.9 refers to a high degree of truthness. So 1 being referring to or the value near to 1 means that the degree of truthness is very high. And a value, if it is near to 0, it means the degree of truthness is very small. Or the degree of falseness is small. So similarly, the person says, so suppose a person B says that the X is smarter than Y, but uh, the degree uh, of this truthness is just 0.1. So in this case, the two, there are two uh, representations or two interpretations of the same problem, right? A person A is saying that X is smarter than Y with a degree of uh, 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 representation of suppose 0.9. So he is pretty sure or he is. Uh, towards the surety that yes, X is smarter than Y. On the other hand, the person B is not sure enough because he uh, says that X may be smarter than Y, but only with the degree of uh, truthness of 0.1. So here the degree of falseness is more than the degree of truthness. So in these kind of scenarios, uh, the fuzziness, uh, the fuzzy logic comes into picture, right? So in fuzzy logic, there is an intermediate value which is uh, which can be partially true or partially false, and that uh, the value actually represents a degree of uh, truthness or degree of falseness. I've given a very simple example, like for example, if it is a statement like if it is cold, and if I say that yes and no, that becomes a Boolean algebra where only two values exist. If the same statement has to be dealt in suppose fuzzy logic. So it may have uh, different ranges. For example, if uh, it gives a value of 0.9, so I'm pretty sure that yes, it is cool. I'm pretty sure about this. So very much can be associated uh, as a tag to this 0.9. So yes, if I'm not very sure, 0.25 is something. Yeah, I'm not very sure. It is very little value. And similarly, 0.1 is a very less value. So these kind of statements can be uh, associated or uh, can process in fuzzy logic theory. Now, fuzzy sets uh, can be considered uh, nothing but a simple extension of classical sets. Where uh, in classical sets, uh, if I if some values exist, if there are you know, three elements, and all the three elements either would exist or either it would not be a part of it. So there would be a value associated with one or zero. One means the element exists in the set, and zero means the element will not exist in this set, right? But in the in the, the, the fuzzy set, the things can be a little different. Where, for example, uh, if I take a set X, so if there are three elements A, B, C, so the first element exists with a degree of uh, truthness of 0.9, a second element exists with a degree of truthness of 0.3, and 0.05, another value. So over here, uh, the uh, each and every value that exists within a set will have what uh, associated with it a degree of membership, which allows either the partial membership or uh, it can allow even the full membership. Full membership means the uh, value of 1.0 is full membership and the uh, absolute uh, uh, impartial membership or uh, towards the left is zero value. So in between also there can be any range of values. So they have varying degree of membership in the set. So this kind of set with varying degree of membership associated with each and every element can be called as a fuzzy set. And uh, and for this, it contains the element that sets by what? Imprecise properties of the membership. So 0.9 is not a precise value. 0.3 is not representing a precise value because it is representing a partial truth or partial falseness, right? Uh, this fuzzy set, uh, see on the right, we have a classical uh, set which is represented, which can attain a value of either zero or one. Uh, where uh, in fuzzy set, uh, the same thing can be presented by a fuzzy uh, by a diagram like this, where the maximum value which can be achieved is one, and the minimum value which can achieve is suppose zero. But in between, it can achieve any of the values, any real values, which is uh, representing degree of membership. 
Uh, mind you, fuzzy sets are uh, often represented by a tilted sign above it, like A and tilted sign above it. So that would represent and that would differentiate with, uh, with the classical set. And uh, we can represent a fuzzy set uh, in a simpler mathematical manner, like the fuzzy set A is equal to uh, the this value of X is the degree of membership in the fuzzy set. So where this uh, is the, the membership function, this is a membership function which assigns uh, every element X of this fuzzy set a member of uh, degree of membership. So by applying this function, I can achieve a degree of membership for each and every element. For example, in the previous example, uh, we said by applying the, uh, suppose A becomes X and this function, after applying that function, A is uh, given the value of point time. So, so uh, for each and every value of the fuzzy set, this function is going to assign a degree of membership to each and every one of that fuzzy set. Right. So fuzzy set also satisfies uh, all the uh, classical properties that you have read in, uh, in, uh, in the set theory. Uh, we'll take few examples. Uh, similarly, uh, fuzzy set can be associated with, suppose, discrete uh, uh, cases also discrete universe. Like for example, if I say that X, uh, there are three uh, uh, cities or countries, uh, I suppose these are representing. So the value of suppose point one to Tehran, this is a discrete value. This is a discrete value, point nine is a discrete value, right? Or uh, that can be another representation which uh, for these sets can be associated with the continuous universe by applying the function. For example, if I apply the function, if this function is defined like this way, so by every value of x can be uh, can be put into this function, it would result in a value which can represent a continuous form. So it can be both discrete as well as continuous, right? So this is how a fuzzy uh, set or uh, the entire fuzzy uh, problem can be presented. For example, I have what uh, in the set uh, three different uh, uh, kind of uh, classes or elements, suppose low, medium, and high, right? And so we have defined a range. So all the values of x, which on the right hand side is less than or equal to plus 70, goes into a higher region. We define it as a high class. And suppose similarly on the left, all the values of x, uh, which are uh, greater than or equal to minus 70, goes into this section. The rest of the values can go into this medium section. So this is how we can represent a uh, fuzzy set uh, uh, for uh, the same uh, uh, problems that we used to represent in classical sets. The representation becomes a little different. So this is more of uh, the, the creation of so all the value in a classical set. It would have been uh, just the, each and every value of temperature would have been there, right? There would be a different values of temperature. So in uh, by converting it into fuzzy set, it means that we have created a class, three different classes. And then uh, uh, it can be either low, it can be median, high. So this is how we actually convert uh, crisp values. Crisp means the values uh, which can be only true or false. So we have converted uh, crisp values into fuzzy values into the range of low, medium, and high by defining some kind of Cartesian function. Uh, all the uh, classical set operations, as I've said, uh, are also applicable to, uh, uh, to fuzzy sets also, fuzzy set theory. For example, uh, if we talk about union operation, suppose A in union of B. Now, suppose uh, we are talking only of uh, fuzzy sets, A and B are fuzzy sets. So it would represent, uh, we can get a fuzzy set C by the union of A in union B, where uh, the elements in fuzzy set A and elements in fuzzy set B would be evaluated. And uh, in respect to each of the elements, we would be uh, associating the maximum value of those fuzzy sets. And that would represent the uh, the union of fuzzy set A and B. Well, I'll uh, talk this with an example in just, uh, the next slide. Similarly, uh, when we talk about intersection between the two fuzzy sets, so it would be actually identifying the minimum value associated with each of the sets, uh, right? And the complement is always one minus of uh, the uh, values uh, represented in a given set. Mind you, this concept might look very similar to uh, uh, to the, the concept of probability. But uh, the probability concept is a little different from uh, the fuzzy. Uh, fuzziness is not actually the, the probability because if you remember in probability, suppose I have suppose uh, M events. 
So if you take the probabilities and some of the probabilities of all the M activities or events, it would not be more than one. But uh, if in, uh, in case of fuzzy sets, if I suppose same number of M elements and, uh, and the value of fuzziness is defined for each and every element, then the sum of those fuzziness can uh, achieve any value. So it would not restrict itself to just one. So that's the difference between uh, fuzziness and uh, the, the concept of uh, probability. So you do not confuse with that. So this is how we represent, Indian is represented uh, the maximum value uh, between both these sets and it is represented uh, graphically this way. This is the representation of your uh, intersection and this is the representation of the complement of the set A. So let us understand with an example, simple example. And yes, uh, all the properties of fuzzy sets are applicable. Uh, commutative property, associated property, you can say a distributed property. That is fairly easy to understand, I suppose. And then all those properties that we are uh, normally used to learn in uh, normal classical sets are applicable to, to the fuzzy sets as well. Let's take a very simple example. Suppose I have uh, uh, Yeah, so suppose I have two fuzzy sets, A and B, right? Now, if you can see this, uh, uh, how it is represented, like for example, uh, these are the uh, elements of the fuzzy sets, suppose element two, three, five, it's whatever. And uh, associated with each and every element is the degree of membership. So the values which are represented at the numerator set are the, are the fuzziness or the fuzzy values or the degree of membership, right? So the below values are the, uh, the elements as usual in the fuzzy set. And the values above are representing what? The, the, the fuzzy values. This plus doesn't mean that uh, it doesn't represent uh, any, any summation or that we are trying to do. This is how uh, uh, fuzzy sets are represented, right? So for example, uh, uh this uh, fuzzy set a if i have to make a complement of it suppose i have to make a complement of suppose b so so complement as i have seen uh, like it was represented as what complement was represented as one minus of the value was contained which was contained in the fuzzy set so over here uh suppose the value was 0.5 so in its res uh, respective uh, complement set it would one minus of 0.5, it would one minus of 0.8, it would one minus of 0.4. So sim similarly, this complement set would be represented. So this is the fuzzy complement set. Similarly, for union, what we would be doing is we would be finding the maximum value between the two uh, respective positions, right? So for, for so suppose the element two, the maximum value was 0.5 or one, so it was maximum was one, so I have to pay, uh, take it what one. Similarly, for uh, uh, element three, the maximum value is 0.8. So I've represented uh, in this set A union B 0.8. So similarly, rest of the elements would be represented. If there was uh, one element which uh, did not get its partner into the another set, then we would take the entire value as it is, right? And similarly, for the intersection, the only difference between union and intersection is that instead of taking maximum value, we would be taking what? Minimum value. For example, the same case for element two, uh, now this time we would be uh, taking 0.5 rather than one, right? So this is how the intersection values can be represented. Difference is a simple formulation where we write in this manner, A slash B, which is nothing but A intersection of B complement. So this is how since we have understood uh, all the three operations, so this can be easily done. D Morgan's law, uh, D Morgan's law is nothing but uh, intersection uh, a a complement intersection of b complement so by uh, applying this formula you can very easily find out how this d morgan laws can be uh, implemented right uh, so let us first uh, uh, talk about uh, the, the the basic uh, steps or the the uh, basic uh, 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 components of uh, fuzzy system so there are basically, uh, uh, we can divide all the basic components into uh, uh, 
uh, first is the classification module which is nothing but uh, converting uh, the value from the crisp set to uh, to a fuzzy set the way we did uh, in the previous example for example uh, the uh, and all the values needs to be converted from the crisp to fuzzy sets right uh, fuzzy values for example uh, i have uh, uh, values uh, uh, x is any value so this x can be represented into five different classes one class has been named as suppose lp right large positive so x is uh, whatever so we can we have to define the range for it also okay, uh, when uh, large positive how it would be defined mathematically it can be like suppose the value of x is greater than or equal to a specific value then it can come into the range of lp right similarly we have to define the uh, uh, mathematical definition for each and every set so instead of a single uh, value uh, which can be a continuous value or whatever we have converted it into a discretization we have converted it into sets uh, based on certain mathematical interpretation so a crisp value has gone into different sets which has uh, which now represents what the the fuzzy sets right now the second uh, uh, important component of uh, of a fuzzy set is your knowledge base right knowledge base is nothing but a set of rules uh, normally in the form of if then rules if uh, input suppose if x comes that x can be on a, among any of the categories if so what has to be done or what has to be done with that particular value f x or a set of uh, similar kind of values so what has to be done with inputs uh, if then rules can be defined so the entire knowledge base or entire it is similar to database right the entire knowledge base uh, would be represented by these set of uh, if then rules these can be also called as production rules and then comes to inference engine like uh, uh, see the overall purpose is to make a decision the overall purpose of fuzzy logic is to uh, create a human like reasoning or human like decision making uh, ability uh, given to the systems right so inference engine would uh, would look into these set of fuzzy uh, so sorry look into these set of knowledge base and it would apply some algorithms some sequence for a given set of input or for a given set of problem it would apply these uh, uh, rules from the knowledge base in some order or some uh, sub uh, combination so that we can reach to a specific decision uh, that is what we humans do so whenever some uh, question or some query comes in so we have our own set of if then rules we have own set of our logics which is stored as a knowledge base so by applying those uh, knowledge uh, base or if then rules we uh, make a conclusion about what has uh, we get as an input so inference engine is something which is the the the, the heart of uh, any uh, for the system and since uh, uh, the input was in a different form which was a uh, crisp value which normally uh, exists in real world because real world does uh, uh, may not have uh, uh, data may not be in the form of crisp values isn't it? The, the values uh, in the real world exist and as a crisp values so again as a output we have to convert them into a form which is understood or which is viable in the real world so we need a defalsification module as an output where so the first step was the falsification module and the last step would be the defalsification module where it would again transform the fuzzy value because we are now in the in between of the system we are dealing with fuzzy uh, values so it would transform the fuzzy set or fuzzy set values obtained by the inference engine into again a crisp value right so this is how uh, the fuzzy system and the base components of fuzzy system works uh this is how we can uh, represent a small architecture of a fuzzy system uh, where uh, we talk about the rules as we have talked this rules will go into the fuzzy inference system which we call it as an intelligence then we have a fuzzy file for which takes input and then we have a deep fuzzy file which uh, produces the crisp outputs right uh, uh let us uh, understand uh, this with a very small uh, example also so that uh, you may have a little bit of understanding of uh, how it works this example is a very famous example called the tipping example so let's uh, let us create a very small uh, fuzzy control system which gives you a fair deal of idea you will not do any kind of implementation right so uh, uh, you have to model that how to choose a correct tip uh, at, at a restaurant right 
So when tipping, you consider these services definitely, how is the service and how is the food quality. And suppose uh, we decide that we would rate the quality and the service on the range or scale of suppose zero to 10. And uh, uh, once by rating them, we can use this to, uh, to decide that what would be the tip, uh, that tip would be uh, of the total bill, it could reach up to maximum 25% suppose. That is the validation that we have been put. So we want this system to get automated, right? So we uh, can formulate this system like, uh, so the inputs becomes what attendants are, who are the attendants, uh, antecedents, sorry, uh, uh, we call it as input. So it is basically service because we wanted uh, to, uh, uh, because there are two input things, one was the service and the food quality, right? So service, uh, at the universe, uh, we had the crisp value range, how good was the service of the waiters uh, with a staff on a scale of zero to 10 right so that is how we can uh, scale it in on this uh, give a value in the scale of suppose zero to ten then uh, this fuzzy value because we have said that every case value needs to be converted into a fuzzy value so we can create a scale of our own saying that out of uh, zero to ten the suppose poor can be suppose a value of from zero to four is suppose poor acceptable suppose it can be from between five to seven is acceptable and amazing is suppose greater than uh, eight to 10 is amazing value. So the uh, the scale of zero to 10 has been now converted into, into uh, three classes basically, two acceptable, amazing. So by converting this, we have actually converted it into a fuzzy set, right? The, the, the next part is the food quality because these were the two uh, inputs, right? So again, the universe could be what? How tasty was the food? Again, on the scale of zero to 10, we can give it in these uh, classes like bad, decent, and great. Again, we can have our own uh, defined ranges for that. Now the outputs. Output were what? The tip, isn't it? So the universe could be like, uh, again, from 0% to 25% of the total bill would be the tip. So again, we can classify it into three categories. Suppose uh, this service, oral service, is what, uh, sorry, the tip can be what low tip or it can be medium tip, it can be high tip. So again, we can define what could be the value ranges. Suppose for high, it can be from 20 to 20% can be put in the category of high. So and similarly, we can do so. So this is how input and output has been prepared now. And so we have converted uh, the crisp inputs into uh, the, the fuzzy uh, inputs and outputs. Now comes the rule parts, that is the intelligence part. So we can have rules like this. If the service, service was the input, right? The service was good, right? Or the food quality was good. So there are two inputs, right? So the service and the food quality. And service uh, and food quality was represented in terms of fuzzy sets. If service is uh, suppose very good, and uh, food quality is very good, then was good, then what decision has to be taken? Then we have to take that, yes, it is the relative is going to be high. So we have already uh, uh, defined the ranges of these uh, inputs, right? So we can make a rule like this. If the service was average, then tip will be medium. And if the service was poor and food quality was poor, then we can. So it's a very fair uh, simplification of the system. So we can create such kind of systems and uh, this can be put into uh, as a embedded code into a machine, which can make such kind of decisions, right? Uh, Similarly, uh, how it, we're going to use it, if I tell a controller that I rated the services point, uh, suppose 9.8, after doing uh, by applying those functions, suppose, or the rules, and the quality is suppose 6.5, so it would come up with the automatic answer, suppose 20.2%. So this becomes an automated presentation. So uh, this was all about uh, for these systems. Uh, the next that we would be doing is uh, we would have uh, another example where we can uh, see that how the different concepts that we learned, uh, uh, whether it was genetic algorithms, uh, uh, whether it was neural networks and uh, whether it is uh, fuzzy logic and how these three concepts can be integrated together to have uh, and how these are associated and how we can have systems where all these three concepts can be integrated and can solve some bigger uh, problems, real world problems. So thank you for this lecture.